Hey, all you Tenere fans, I could not be more excited uh, recording this video today because I am preparing the motorbike to go on the first, uh, my first backcountry discovery route ride through New Mexico. And I'm starting that in six days. I am super stoked about it. I've never done one. I've ridden a lot of dirt roads and some sand and mud and water crossings and all that around here in Texas, but I've never uh, actually been on a BDR. So I'm taking this machine, of course, along with my buddy who's riding a KTM 790. Hopefully I'll have a bunch of video to share from that ride. Since my last recording, though, I have made some other significant improvements to the bike to get it ready for the BDR ride. And I have to say that I've packed, unpacked, repacked, double packed, triple packed, and it's just been crazy to try to parse everything down to something I think is manageable, and I still think it's a little bit much. But I'm ready to go. So just to start things off, I did go ahead and install the high fender kit from Camel ADV. I'm very pleased with it. I used it as service. Uh, I'm not saying that right, I'm sure. Supermoto Fender, which was very inexpensive off of Amazon. The only caution I would have if you decide to put this on is that I had to take some washers and stack them back here to drop the front of this fender just a bit so it would not hit the Outback Motortech uh, crash bars so there's plenty of clearance when I'm uh, steering lock to lock. Also, before you attempt to install the um, high fender kit, make sure you know how to bleed your brakes. And if you don't, look at it online and learn about how to do that. If you don't do that, you're gonna be stuck with a motorcycle with no front brakes. Uh, and that could be very precarious to try to get it to a shop. It is not difficult to do, uh, but it does take a little bit of time and patience. And there's just a procedure of doing it. It's like I said, not very difficult. I was able to do it in just a few minutes myself. I've also upgraded the tires. You know, I had the uh, Scorpion STR tires, I believe, is stock that came on them, and they were great tires. Uh, but knowing that I'm going to be hitting some sand and perhaps mud after watching several videos, the High Fender kit and these Michelin Aniku Wild tires were my tire of choice. Uh, I'm not going to get into a tire conversation with anyone because that seems to be almost political anymore. But I'm very pleased with how these ride. They're smoother than the stock tires on the road so far. They're brand new, as you can tell with all the feelers on them. But man, it feels so much better than just the, uh, the stock tires, which I only had 1,000 miles on. So I kept those as well, of course. I did add frame sliders to the front from RNG. I did that because I did not put a center stand on this bike. It'll add a little bit of additional protection. And also, it'll give me a point where I can jack the bike up if I need to. I'm going to build myself just a homemade jack to lift up this side of the motorcycle in case I need to do a, uh, a field repair on a tire and take the wheel off and all that jazz. I also have put in the nylon bolt here. Uh, I believe I got these out of Rally Raid out of the UK just to replace the um, aluminum bolt that was there in case that gets uh, sheared off when this gets hit. Hopefully it doesn't get hit anymore with the frame slider on there. Some other things that I've done. Um, I did go ahead and go with the Moscow Moto Nomad tank bag. I did not want to do a tank bag on this motorcycle, but uh, just after I got everything done, uh, from an access perspective and from a preparation perspective, I did not want to take a backpack. I have one uh, with a camelback in it as well, but I thought this was going to be a little bit easier. I got 70 ounces of water in here. I can carry my personal protection device, read between the lines there. Uh, I got my Leatherman and uh, knife, uh, all, all the stuff that I normally would need. And of course, this is very easy to take off of the bike and take in with me. It even has some backpack straps on it if you decide you want to use those. Anchoring it was relatively easy uh, just because all I did was take a couple of twist ties and I attached this side of the clasp down to both sides of the frame. And then it's got a Velcro adjuster on this side. And then of course, you've got all clasps back here that go around the neck of the steering as well. So I've got all of that ready to go. Uh, very easy to get it off and get the uh, tank filled up when you need a little bit of extra fuel also. Now I also went with the Kriegas um, with the Outback Motortech uh, X-Frame panniers. Um, I've got the Kriega OS, I think these are 32s uh, on the outside. And so then you know, I packed my tools, uh, tire stuff, and anything that was heavy, my camping and kitchen gear in these bags. For the most part, I tried to keep anything that was fragile on the inside and put anything that wasn't fragile on the outside in case I do take a spill. So I have the OS32s and then I have these OS, I believe these are 12s that sit on the back. 
uh, as well. Uh, now that looks again like it's a lot, but this is just full of food. It's relatively light. I got some MREs in there and some other snacks just to take out with me. Again, if I get stuck, I want to have a couple of days worth of food to get me by. I haven't put it on the other side yet, but I do have it down here. Uh, normally I use a Pelican case for all of my electronics, but uh, I don't want to take the Pelican case. I don't really have a good place to put it on the motorcycle. So uh, while I had that on the Super Tenere, I'm going to be using just the Kriega bag. I'm still trying to sort out all of my goodies uh, to take with me. I will say one of the things that I wanted to do instead of taking jumper cables, and I've been stranded more than once as a result of a dead battery, is I bought this NOCO Boost Plus device. It is super cool. Uh, once you charge it up, it can boost your bike. It can also charge all of your devices USB style. Uh, so that is super cool. Uh, and uh, it's really just eliminating having to carry a whole bunch of batteries with you if you're out on the road more than a day or two at a time. I do have also a um, solar powered battery over there. I'm probably not going to be taking that. I'm still trying to figure out whether I'm gonna take the Hero camera. And then I have all of my charging cables. What a mess this is, but I'm taking a USB port, a couple of blocks, and uh, then I can just plug in the color-coded side of the USB to whatever side uh, cable that I need on this side. Some of these are duplicates, guys, just because you know I have multiple things to charge at once, batteries for cameras and all that jazz. Uh, and of course, I'm not real smart. I have a, a Sony FDR X3000, I've got the Hero, and I've got a Garmin as well, so I'm dealing with battery management. Also, I plan on trying to hardwire some of those into the bike through a USB port or having them charge off of the dash, especially the Garmin. Um, and then I have all my batteries here, of course, and uh, I'll put the used ones in here so I can just manage that. Put my cables and all the other stuff that goes along with charging in the other bag. Now, with all of that being said, I've also installed a microphone right back here with a dead cat on it so that I can record the sound of the motorcycle. I've made some videos and I've had people complain about, hey, we don't want to hear your dumb music. We want to hear the motorcycle running. But you can't hear the motorcycle running because there's so much freaking wind noise. And I hate listening to that myself. I'd rather listen to music. So I did add this uh, and I'm testing it out. I've got it wired up to the side here, just with some Velcro straps. And then I've got it here. Uh, and then I have an extension off the back of one of my cameras that I can plug in so I'm not just yanking it off all the time. I'm gonna work through that appropriately. Uh, also, uh, I did add the Alt Rider um, muffler uh, guard here just to keep my uh, bag, hopefully, from melting alongside of the stock muffler. I'm replacing the muffler in the mid pipe. It hasn't come in yet. I'm going with the full aero exhaust. That is what I had on my Super Tenere. I was pretty pleased with that. Perhaps one of the most important accessories, of course, is the bell, uh, the Highway Demon Bell here. Of course, this is from Deals Gap. I've had this on, I don't know how many motorcycles. And my Iron Butt Association placard, uh, just to let everybody know that I'm legit. Um, water, I'm taking a gallon of water. I'm taking an extra gallon of gas. Probably don't need the gas, but better safe than sorry. Uh, also, I've got the uh, First Gear 70 liter bag up here. Uh, everything that's light or that is long is in here. So I got my tent stakes, my cot stakes, not cot stakes, cot uh, uh, poles in here, tent poles in here. Uh, my ax is in here. And then all of my clothes to keep the lightness of that bag as, as light as possible. Also, when I get to a hotel, uh, when we're not camping, I'll be able to just take this off uh, and hopefully park under the porta cache and protect my other bags versus having to drag everything in. I'm not gonna do a full bag inventory, guys, because I've done one on the Super Tenere, which is in a bunch of pieces right now uh, while I'm getting everything off of it and getting it ready to sell. Um, but uh, there's plenty of videos out there on how to pack, and I may do that at a later point when I go to Alaska. So I've got the other side here of the Nomad strapped down with the Velcro and everything. Um, I also put on some new pegs from IMS. These are a little bit wider uh, and of course longer as well. So I like those quite a bit. I did have some Adventure 2 pegs from those guys, but they didn't bolt up well to the motorbike. Um, I've also up here uh, just done a couple of other things. Uh, this gets kind of busy with the Garmin uh, and then you know, I've got the phone, my phone that's going to go here. So I got Reverend Scenic as a backup. 
And uh, then I put my 360 camera on here as well from Garmin. You know, I've had this thing for many years. I think everybody has a different opinion of 360 cameras and so on. I have used the crap out of this thing and the old beater race car over there. And it has just been fan fantastic for me in most circumstances. So pretty excited to get some video and share that. And then, of course, I got the Sony remote there also. Those are the upgrades and updates that I have on the motorcycle. And uh, I hope uh, everything goes well on the BDR ride. And as it does, I'll be putting some videos up uh, for a review. I know there's a lot of good ones out there already. I'm excited to take my turn off-road. I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching.